put it into capture again, and now I'm going to have my money back, if you don't mind. Um, so there, now we've broken the enemy's resistance. Yeah, he's got Tesla calls and a couple of troops, but I've got air forces, an air force, tanks, the lot. Battle control initialized. Hello there, comrades and cannon fodder. It's Devoid here. I've got a 1v1 multiplayer game on Woodlands map for you. Um, this is one of my games that I fought earlier. Um, the post that I just made before this one was actually a more recent game, but this is um, a game from earlier on because my last few games aren't aren't really up to standard. To be fair, that um, you know they were too quick, too easy. So I've picked a couple of replays from earlier that got got a couple of interesting features: some engineer hunting, some uh, bit of tech, bits and pieces. So um, I'm going to post a couple of replays in uh, with in this single post. So, uh, to provide some extra content for, for all my Red Alert viewers. But, my opponent has sent an engineer for the closest oil, Derek. I have done the same now. Um, for my last few games, I've been taking a risk and sending him, this engineer, on his own straight away. From the oil, Derek, to here. Uh, from the barracks to the oil, Derek. Now, that's not safe because a player could have had a rifleman on his way here by now and he could beat my engineer to the oil derrick so i need to be careful but my first four rifles are moving out to search for the enemy's engineer and my opponent's got his first oil derrick captured and he's moving his engineer between the two oil derricks so i'm well prepared for that now he's killed a couple of my rifles but i've got two here and they are in the ideal place so there you go he's under fire there's the first engineer dead so my opponent has captured one oil derrick i am in the process of capturing my second so uh, my opponent's lost his engineer is he going to replace it here's my uh one of my rifle guards yeah he's been taken out my veteran sadly but i've got the rifleman here there's no point just losing him like by attacking here because um you know they've got the view range bonus from the oil derrick and i do know the engineer was moving from that way so i do know he's captured this but i thought i've got to move closer but i'm not going to commit yet um my opponent hasn't got the oil derrick but um I didn't know for sure, so I wasn't going to press and engage with just infantry. Now, I nearly caught him there with a rifleman, but I didn't have enough. Only one guy, and he was taken out. Now my opponent's capturing, and I'm not moving in quick enough to stop him. There, look, he's just captured it just, and I caught him, but he was a couple of seconds in time. Now, I've got my uh, engineer close by, but I haven't got my scout vehicle yet. I've got the war factory, and scout vehicle's about to be built now. And I'm actually in my opponent's view range here, so I've made a mistake. These riflemen of mine should be here. Now, I have got the defender's advantage, but he can see all my units, so I'm in big trouble, and he's got a scout vehicle now. So, I've lost my engineer, and I've committed all those infantry for nothing. That was a big mistake, and a foolish, stupid mistake. I should have attacked that and moved back. That was a stupid mistake. I lost an engineer, and all my uh, troops up front. I was lucky I didn't lose this as well, to be fair. If, it had, if I had that in time, it, I would have protected and won that battle. But, ouch, I've just lost my APC for nothing. So, that isn't a very good start. Losing an engineer and an APC for nothing at all, and a bunch of infantry, that's not good. Let's just look at these starting armies' values. Now you see my opponent's ahead. He's a, nearly a grand ahead. Now that's why, it's just because I've just messed it up. That's not very good at all. And he's securing his oil. Derek now, he's got, a, he's got his two flak trucks with it, and uh, enough troops to protect it. So um, it's well and truly out of my reach. Plus, I'm not training another engineer because I have my two closest oil derricks. That's okay for me. If he'd have prevented me from capturing one or two of them, then yeah, maybe I'd get an engineer. But I'm not training one to go for this oil derrick, not yet. Especially as I've got no scout vehicle, I can't go on the offensive. But I am about to produce my MCV if I'm... Yeah, that's right. 
uh, there's my second MCV. He's going to set up an expansion. Now my opponent, what's he up to? He doesn't have his second expansion yet. Although he is still ahead in army value slightly. Um, let's have a look at economy. We've got five ore trucks each. And I'm assuming that's my opponent's um, MCV. Yes, it's nearly ready. So he's nearly ready to roll out with his MCV. I've got my first tank. And I know that I'm being attacked by a flak truck. Which is why I'm moving these infantry closer to the view range of the oil derrick. And also closer to the tank. Because I need them both. And it'll give me a nice advantage to turn this engagement. But my opponent's going straight for the oil derrick. That's what I should have done. See, he's, he's on the ball. He's smart. That move was a good choice. But this uh, MCV, he's taking a shady place for his expansion. Setting up in a shady, out-of-the-way place. Because I could check here. And it's possible, if I was in a hurry, that I would assume there's no expansion there. But... I've done it myself, where you set up at a shady side when you feel under pressure or whatever. But uh, you need to set your expansions here, especially on this one. That's, you know, I can just uh, leave a small force here and destroy his ore trucks. It makes it too easy for your opponent to send small eco raids. Two heavy tanks could wait here and destroy any ore trucks on that field. But he's got a third MCV, so he wants to be building quickly. Uh, so I've got one oil, Derek. My opponent's got two. Because of my my mistake. Uh, I lost my engineer, I lost my APC, I lost a group of infantry, and it was all for nothing. So uh, that gave my opponent the advantage early on. But that advantage is gone. I am now, I've overtaken his army value well and truly, and I've attacked him here at his expansion. He's got absolutely nothing in the way of defences. He's just lost a refinery and an ore truck. And he's retreating with his MCV. Now, he had no choice. At least he salvaged that. But he, he had no defences whatsoever. Now, you need something. Now, he's got a Tesla coil here, but he's not mining there yet. That Tesla coil and his troops could have done with being here. Five minutes ago. Or three minutes ago. Right. Um, you see, I've got my MCV here. Now, that allows me, because of the power plan, I can then place a refinery here. And I don't have to move, I can place another one here. And that allows me to move this one out, because this one is in place for a, a decent amount of time now. So it'll free up my home base MCV. Look, I've got plenty of troops and tanks protecting it. I have split my army, but I feel that I'm safe to do so. That's, I had that sense. But, um, yeah, I was surprised to see a plane crashing on, on my troops. But here you go, look, I've got more than enough to protect this. And I've moved this home base MCV here so that I can build base defences at my home base here to protect my important assets. Plus, I can build defences here because my build radius uh, is wide enough to build defences at this expansion. And now I've moved forward. This is probably a refinery to place and I'm guessing I'll put it here because my build radius doesn't stretch to here but that's that's fine that'll do you know once there's five ore trucks on it it won't matter that it's an inch away but I am lagging I need to place this I'm guessing it's a refinery yeah it is now there we go I've placed it there we are so I'm building a power plant and it may well be another refinery maybe although I think I've got enough for now there's an eco transfer Let's check our army values at this point. My opponent's got some thieves. There's a thief look. Very nice early use of thieves. There's another thief, and I haven't got any myself, I don't think. Yeah, I've taken his thief out, sadly, but it was nice to see him used um, before I make use of him. My opponent's using thieves. That's nice to see, because usually I'm the one who gets thieves used first. Um, my opponent's got four. So, yeah, he's got three at home base, and he's got one here, look. I think, yeah, he's chosen to go for that ore truck. So, yes, he's stolen an ore truck, and he stole two pips of ore as well. So, um, yeah, he's got a little bit of value there. And even if I destroy it, uh, he still uh, stopped me from using it. So, uh, he's done well. Not only has he stopped me from using it, he's actually using it himself. Now, that's a brilliant use of a thief, because it's 500 credits for something that's going to earn you thousands and take thousands away from me. So uh, taking a, an ore truck with a thief is an excellent use of 
um, is an excellent use of thieves. Now, I'm putting my thieves in APCs so I can deploy them immediately on location. My opponent is marching across the map with his, and they're being picked off and shot on the way and stuff. Even a rifleman took a pot shot at him, and I've attacked here. And there's another thief dead over there, but I've attacked here, and I've got my APC ready in case I can make good use of it. Now, I've got my tanks up front. Uh, there's a thief, look. Uh, but I've got my tanks up front, and the enemy has focused his forces here, so I've got my... This is my APC, and my opponent sent a lot more thieves there. Let me just check a moment. Yeah, he sent one thief there. Uh, so, yeah, I've got uh, Tesla coils hit that. I had to deploy quickly and then send these guys in, but there's a nice few thousand. And the Tesla coils killed a te uh, the APC and an engineer, and then a flame tower killed the other. So I wasted two 800 on engineers, and the APC was destroyed. But I got a nice few thousand out of the infiltration, plus I took it away from the enemy. Now, he has whittled down my forces effectively, but his have been destroyed. So that's fine. Now, there's a thief. He's going for another ore truck. So that's the second ore truck he's captured, stolen from me. That's very nice to see. It's good. And he's got five thieves here. Uh, here's another thief operation from me. These guys are in an APC. And I've got my V2 in action. There you go. There's two thieves dropped off at on site. And there's some more thousands. So uh, they are very effective in an APC. Now, he's captured that ore truck to stop me using it. But he hasn't taken it himself. And there's some more thieves. He's still got five in the field. But my V2 is trying its best to survive. And this is where the combat is. Nice. Now he's seen some of my vehicles and he's ordered his thieves to try and take some. But my vehicles are moving away. There, he's taken that ore truck look. And here's a th his four thieves there. He's trying to go for my vehicles, but he won't be able to get near them. Now, he can see this vehicle because of the oil derrick, but my infantry will protect it. There's, you know, and there, they walked right past his thieves' look. So, there you go. There's proof that they can't be seen when you point blank. And I don't... That wasn't a move order. It was an attack move. But there's another thief. There's three left for the, my opponent. And my army values way too much now. And it's nice work with the thieves. I'm impressed. It's just, oof, you know, I've uh, done too much damage now. And uh, my V2s have been doing nice work. And my opponent couldn't translate three um, conyards into any advantage. It didn't help. Now I've got more of my own thieves in action. And here we go. I'm not destroying the construction yard because I don't want to. I've just looked at, made it look like I've damaged it badly and moved on. But here we go. I've got another bit of an engagement and I'm keeping my V2s back look. And I've got aircraft. I'm setting up a forward wall factory and bringing up thieves and engineers here. There's an engineer closer to home uh, and he's going to capture this. Uh, to the enemy or refinery or at least put it in the chokehold so the enemy can't use it themselves and he sold a, an advanced power plant to kill the engineer so that was nice work he either he maybe he thought I was going to capture it but um, I um, I wasn't I was going to reset that capture bar and do the chokehold and there's my enemy's thief again going in and he's moving into my refinery. Let's see the cash situation. We've, I've got 1,800. He's got 1,500. So that was a nice steal. He did well there. He's got three grand and I'm struggling for cash now. So that was a nice steal, that one. Perfect timing. A very effective uh, infiltration. But I'm just going to take it back. Because I've got a thief here and an engineer that's going to stop him from selling. He's got nothing else to sell now near it. So he could run me over with the... Or truck, but I was ready for that. So I put it into capture again, and now I'm going to have my money back, if you don't mind. Um, so there, now we've broken the enemy's resistance. Yeah, he's got Tesla coils and a couple of troops, but I've got air forces, and air force tanks, the lot. You know, he's got no power, he's doomed, and I've captured his refinery, and my opponent has called it. So, but that was some interesting uh, use of thieves there. I'm, I like to see. I'm happy to see my opponent using thieves, 
because uh, it gives me a taste of my own medicine, which is always nice. <laughs> so uh, this is it. It's coming to an end. He's gone. So he's called it. So he did say uh, GG, but you're supposed to uh, surrender. But never mind, never mind. It's no big deal. Uh, it was a fun game and an interesting game, and I can su I can clean up after other people. I don't mind in this sense. Right, so I'll just go through the graphs and charts, and it looks like my opponent was ahead at one point, and it was probably when I uh, blew up, blew it with that, uh, trying to capture his oil derrick here, and I lost my engineer, I lost my small starting army, and then I lost an APC straight after it. I bet that's that point there where he overtook me in army value for a while because of my mistake. It was it was ridiculous doing that. I know better. But, yeah, look at how my army has just grown in strength massively. There's the army graph for you. Here's the earnings graph. Now, my opponent had serious money problems in the middle, but he soon recovered. He was okay either side of that. Uh, my finishing army... And he's got a construction yard left, so that's it. But here's my finishing army. Aircraft, V2s, tanks, flak trucks, APC... Flamers, I've got my engineer still, one of them, rocket soldiers, infantry, and the combat chart. Uh, I killed 188 units, my opponent killed 215. Now, I lost zero buildings, but my opponent lost 33. And I've got a 36,000 value army. And I destroyed 86,000 worth of my opponent's assets. My opponent destroyed 48,000 of my assets. Um, my support powers are in in countdown because I've got power troops and spy plane because I built a couple of uh, airfields. And airfields are like any other production structure. The more you have up to seven, the faster your units build. But once you've got to seven, that's okay. They won't build any faster. If you build more than seven, it's so you can have production at various locations. But war factories, you don't build up to seven. You build up to four barracks and other things you build up to seven also con yards they can be built up to seven to make you building faster now i would have thought they'd be four but no and no one i haven't seen anyone use seven <laughs> anyway but it's interesting that you can build seven and still benefit from it um but production i'm building another war factory why not can't really go wrong with multiple war factories. In economy, I've got seven ore trucks left, despite having a couple stolen. Still got two oil derricks, but it's only because I've captured one at the end. Um, I earned 123,000. My opponent earned 90,000. And here's the basics. I'm at 31 actions per minute. My opponent at 27. There's the scores. 1, 2, 4, 4 to me. 5, 8, 6 to my opponent. And I'm going to add a second replay to this post, like I say. So I'll just go straight to that Final one. Control terminated. Battle control initialized. And welcome all to my second replay. Uh, this is a 1v1, and I joined my opponent's game. So this one's on Dirge, um, version 3 dirge map and i do like this map it's uh it's quite good it's a unique sort of map even um it, it hasn't it's been out for a little while it's not brand new but i don't know it's just something about the position of the ore and all the terrain that it's you know it's quite a unique map in its own way i like it i mean it reminds me of other maps but it's just that placement seems slightly different to usual and uh, with these roots around the top and stuff, that it just adds a few elements that not all maps have. But I've sent my engineer for the closest oil, Derek, and he's vulnerable. I haven't sent an escort. My first four rifles are going to hunt the enemy's engineer. But on this map, it's a different matter. It's not like Timian or Woodlands, where you know exactly where the enemy's engineer is going to be and timing or have a good idea. The distances are greater. So it's not as easy to intercept the enemy engineer. <coughs> Excuse me. But I've, I'm guarding this oil derrick, but my opponent is also going for my, clo my main oil derrick here. Not my closest, my second oil derrick. Now, I've got troops protecting it, but he's closer. And my opponent's capturing his first oil derrick. I've already captured mine. So my engineer is on his way and the combat has started because I don't want these guys messing around near my oil derrick. I don't want that at all. I need my engineer to have a clear path. 
and be safe while he goes to work. And here we go, we've got some more enemy units. Not a good idea to charge like that with just five against a superior force. But his engineer is escorted by a rifle, well, that's good. It's uh, it's better than nothing. My guy, he was on his own up here, but I moved this guy afterwards up to protect him. But I need to get out of the habit of sending him on his own because, you know, it's too easy to stop you, stop you even when you go into it or go, moving away from it. <clears throat> and my opponent asked if he lost that engagement because of the defensive bonus. Well, and I said, yeah, and also probably my formation being slightly better than his, just a little group of troops. But I've captured my second oil derrick. And my opponent, his engineer's there. Now, why isn't he going for this one? That's very strange. Has he seen these guys? And even if he has, he can kill them with all these. Strange. I'm keeping my engineer on hand because I've got my eye on this one. I know the enemy hasn't captured it, so it's a possibility. Uh, yes, I'm going for it now. I haven't got my um, war factory placed yet. My opponent has. Now, I think I delayed... Uh, there's my war factory. I think I delayed my build... On a couple of games, uh, in the, my last few games, there was one or two at least where I actually delayed my build by doing things like this, and it distracted me. So, uh, in fact, it was on a game, Agita, a game on Agita map, the last time I did it, and I realised I hadn't placed my refineries. They were just sat there idle waiting to be placed. At least one of them was. Uh, it was just sat ready while I was messing about hunting engineers. So uh, that was a mistake. It could have cost me the game or lost an early advantage that I'd gained. My opponent's attacking my oil derrick with a flat truck. And there's his engineer. He's off on his way. Now I'm sending a rifle. You see, I'm, but he's protecting it. Nice. He's sent that back. So he did well there. Or he is doing because he's protecting this engineer, so it's it's good. But I've got I've got a decent force on the way. He will have to turn back quickly if he's to survive or escape. Now there's a capture. Cut off his escape route. Ignore these guys for now. That's it. Shot in the back. Got the engineer in the end. And here we go. I know I can win this engagement. I've got my scout vehicle there, and the enemy is churning out um, all trucks. Well, that's very nice. You can earn extra cash that way. Uh, but we've got five ore trucks each. So where is his scout vehicle? And I don't know. I don't know about that. I've got three oil derricks to my opponent's one and a decent presence in the centre. Let's just have a look at the initial army values. Three, eight thousand to me, four thousand to my opponent. Okay. Yeah, he's lost a couple of units. If, if you lose a few separate little groups, it can soon start to cost you. Yeah, I've got my expansion moving out. Um, let's have a look. My opponent, it looks like he's got... Did he just place a, an airfield? Yeah, he has, yeah. I hope he's got cash to support that. Uh, he's got a couple of grand. He's going to need plenty of this stuff, this ore... He's going to need plenty of it. And I'm protecting my MCV, my construction yard, here for the expansion. And I've got my engineer in the APC. So he's ready to run in and capture if any opportunities come up. That's what I'm trying to get used to, keeping engineers and thieves in an APC uh, nowadays, rather than running, the round, running them around on foot. If I've got a radar dome and I attack an enemy expansion, I could bring a construction yard and set up a barracks close to my target. That's fair enough. But otherwise, I like to have an APC with thieves and engineers in, just so that when the opportunity comes up, I can overrun a position and then send the APC in and deploy whatever I need to right next to the target. And all the command groups ready and set, and so I can capture quickly or escape or whatever. 
and um you know just like i say for when those opportunities arrive and basically this looks like one we've got an mcv each set up at this expansion which is my opponent's expansion i should be here to be fair but i'm the one who's got a, a refinery set up there first so i've claimed it and here we go i'm attacking but I thought, oh, why attack? I'll just take it. And there you go. Deployed the engineer directly next to it. Now, he can't place any defences. He can't sell it. He can't pack it up. He can't do anything. This belongs to me unless I choose to be generous and give it back. But until then, it belongs to me. And in about two seconds, it's too late. There you go. Now, I own this. I've got three now. He's sending a plane. Now, don't send the plane on its own. It nearly landed on the engineer. Run away. Look, here's some more planes. And there's two two down. Yeah, that one escaped. Quite nice. But that was just a waste of planes. They could have moved this way and attacked from this direction to sh strafe all these troops. But you can't attack from the front because my tanks will soak up half of it. And let's just have a look. 23,000 to me. 14,000 to my opponent. And here we go. There's a bit of an engagement. And he did have his plane keeping a view range, keeping a, a good um, vision over my forces, but now it's been shot down, so he hasn't got that view range anymore. Uh, he's using spy plane for it. Very nice use of that for view range. Very nice. And there's another plane, but at least it crashed and killed about four riflemen this time. It's better than the rest have done. And now the spectator has left. I've got a second attack up here. Because nothing's opposing me with any uh, effectiveness. I can just defeat everything so far that I'm coming up against. And here we go. I've overrun them at the bottom, overrun them at the top. Both economy... There you go, he's called it there. So that was the uh, second replay of this post. I'll just go through the graphs and charts quickly for you. Um, there's our army graph. Earnings graph were quite even up until the uh, seventh minute there. It's quite interesting. My finishing army, it looks like about, what was it, about seven heavy tanks or something. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I've got my an APC, some troops, uh, an engineer, and a, some infantry. Um, uh, flamer troops, I meant for troops. Uh, combat char, I've got a 26,000 army value, but I killed 94 units, my opponent killed 37. And none, neither of us lost structures, because I captured instead of destroying. Very, very nice. Um, I destroyed 20,000 of my opponent's assets, 20,000 credits worth. My opponent destroyed 4,000 worth of my assets in credits. No support powers in effect. My opponent did have an airfield, but they weren't they they weren't about long enough. But he did use his spy plane. Uh, production. I've got another war factory being produced. Like I say, you can't have too many war factories. You can't really go wrong. Uh, economy. I've got my three oil derricks, eight ore trucks. I spent fifty-seven thousand. My opponent spent forty-six thousand. So it's not bad. Quite close when it came to economy. But I've got eight grand left. They do not. That's a bit of a difference. Uh, so, basics, I'm at 28 actions per minute. My opponent was at a very relaxed 18. But I am just in low power... <coughs> excuse me, I'm just in low power by 10, by 10. So, that would mean I'd have to sell one of these flame towers. And I could sell this one or this one <coughs> because they take 20 power. So, to sell one of these would put me in normal power mode and then I could build a power plant at, at normal speed. But since we're building a war factory, that's not good. I would need to sell that and cancel the war factory. Build a power plant first. But there you go. Anyway, there's the basic graphs and charts for the second game. If you like what you saw, give us a sub and a like. And um, like I say, the capture with the engineers and the thieves infiltrations with the APC. That's what I'm starting to try and do now. Keep my infiltration, uh, my thieves and my engineers in an APC so that when those opportunities for captures come up, I can send that APC in and deploy right next to the target quickly and safely. But I've actually got my APC. He's about to drop off the engineer here, look. 
So any opportunities, there could be neutral structures or it could be an opponent's construction yard, whatever that may be, these chances arise and then having your engineer or thief or spy, having them in an APC makes all the difference and you can get them on site quickly. With the allies, you may even put mechanics in them so that if you lose an MCV or the enemy does, you could drive a, a, a ranger with a mechanic in and quickly send the ranger with a mechanic, drop him off and repair the husk of an MCV or something. So it won't be an APC if you're allies, it'd be a ranger with one infantryman in. But it's still, it's still useful. But yeah, for the Soviets, put thieves and engineers in an APC. Keep it close by with a command control group so that it can be used when the chance arises. But there's all your graphs and charts, like I say. And, uh, you know, um, if you like what, I, what you saw, like I say, um, give us a sub and a like. And take good care of yourselves. And until my next post, goodbye for now. Battle control terminated.